I recreated this shot from Andor using only Blender and Unreal Engine. It took me only one day to make it and I've learned a few very valuable lessons along the way. I designed the scene using Blender and used Unreal Engine to add details and lighting. I then filmed myself in front of a green screen and placed the footage right into the scene. Let's do this. Step 1. Blog out. The first thing I always do is importing a model of a human as a size reference. Then I blocked out my scene using cubes and booleans. Usually I don't like to add details at this stage, but since this was another one of my quick and dirty projects, I decided to bevel some of the edges using the steps preset. This is a really handy trick that allows you to add details to your models in seconds. It's especially great for any type of brick walls or castle or temple ruins. The buildings in the background are also very simple. They started off as a cube that I divided using edge loops and then simply extruded some of the faces. About 90% of modeling sci-fi related stuff is just extruding, scaling, insetting and beveling your mesh. I was too lazy to do another building so I just duplicated the mesh and mirrored it so the scene looks a bit more symmetrical. Step 2. The gate. I knew that the gate in the foreground was going to be the largest element in my render so it had to be done the right way. And by the right way, I mean the quick way that is totally not the right way. If you came here for good topology, well, look away. I used a cylinder and a boolean modifier to cut out the circle in the middle. I then selected the edges of the circle, duplicated and extruded them to give the gate a bit more structure. Now it was time for my absolute favorite part of modeling, adding the brick details. Again, if you are into game design and need decent topology, look away. I used the remesh modifier to add more geometry to my mesh. At this point, adding too much geometry is better than adding too little, just be aware of the limits of your hardware. I ended up with around 2.5 million faces on my model, but that totally depends on the size of your mesh and your needs. I applied the modifier, imported a brick texture from Polyhaven and unwrapped my gate using cube projection. It's important to do this step at this point as we are going to use the UV map for our displacement. Speaking of displacement, let's apply the displacement modifier and select the height map that comes with the brick texture. Set the coordinates to UV and reduce the strength to a value that makes sense. Now that looks a lot more real than before. To save up some space and optimize performance, I used the decimate modifier to reduce the poly count. If you're only using Blender and don't have to export your mesh to Unreal, you can just use the displacement map within your shader and set your render engine to cycles. Again, I'm using Unreal Engine, which does not have tessellation, so applying the displacement to your geometry is absolutely necessary. Step 3. Detailing. After adding a few details to the walls in the distance, I decided that they need a second material. But because I'm stupid, I remeshed the walls before that and had to select these parts of the mesh by hand. I also added more walls, doors, railings, lights and cables. If you want to know how to quickly add details to your scenes in Blender, I made a video that covers exactly that. I'll put the link to that in the description. Step 4. Into Unreal. I exported the model as an FBX and imported it into Unreal Engine. The first thing I did was adding a proper ground and this asset from Quixel Megascans worked like a charm. I duplicated it all over my scene and to make it look less repetitive I simply rotated some of them. To add more details I used a different asset with bigger gravel that I placed near the walls so it looked like dirt and gravel that usually builds up near walls and corners. I started adding props to make my scene look less empty. Electrical boxes are usually a great start as they look familiar but also give the scene a bit of a sci-fi look. At this point the lighting really started to bother me so I decided to add a dynamic lighting system to my scene. I love to use Ultra Dynamic Sky as it's super easy to use and looks really good. It's not photoreal but comes very close and since we don't see that much of the sky anyway, it totally works. I knew that I wanted to add more buildings in the background and coincidentally Chuck CG, an absolutely amazing YouTuber, published a free kid bashing set containing multiple Star Wars inspired buildings. I imported them into my scene and gave them a simple plaster material from Quixel. Then I continued dressing up my scene by adding decals. Even though Star Wars is set in a galaxy far far away, they also have to deal with damage, dirt and leakage. To make the scene look more filmic, I used a steam particle system that comes with Unreal. You can scale it up and use the custom time dilation slider to make it fit. The foreground was still too bright, so I added a plane to cast a shadow exactly where I needed it. You would do the same thing on a real set, with the difference that it only takes a few seconds if you do it in Unreal. To make the gate stand out a bit more, I added a simple point light. I was still not happy with the overall look of my scene, so I decided to add more fog. 
This instantly gave it more depth and an overall more cinematic feel. I also added more antennas, railings and a few models I found on Sketchfab. Links to the models down below. The scene still looked incredibly empty so I thought I'd try something new. I got up my foldable green screen and some really professional lights that I got for around 20 bucks at my local hardware store. I put on my most Star Wars looking clothes and decided that most inhabitants of my scene are either bold or have to wear an ugly cap. In DaVinci Resolve I keyed out my footage, exported it and placed it directly into my scene using the new media play AXA. Even though this workflow sounds relatively simple, it absolutely wasn't. The way DaVinci Resolve exports XR files is probably very professional, but for the purpose I'm using it for, it makes things really complicated. So if you're interested in a dedicated video about my green screen workflow, let me know in the comments. And this is more or less my final result. If there's one thing I've learned from this project, besides how thin my legs look in these jeans, it's the importance of the incredible work professional costume designers, makeup artists and actors do. It might be easy to remake a halfway decent looking movie set in just one day, but making it come to life is a totally different thing, especially if you're doing this more or less alone. Oh, and another quick tip, using two foldable green screens is nice, but having to remove these borders in post is something that I had absolutely no interest in. So it's in the final render, who cares? And that's it. I think recreating shots from films or TV shows is a really fun exercise that helps you improve your skills as a 3D artist, filmmaker or set designer. So the big question is, what film set should I do next? It can really be anything from Star Wars, Lord of the Rings to The Witcher. Just let me know in the comments below. Until then, make sure to watch this video next.